Thank you for coming to listen to our session. We will present under the title, Towards a World Without Dependency Consideration, or Resources Be Dated Simply. Firstly, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Akiho Miyamura. I'm a software engineer at Hitachi. I have been in charge of providing OpenShift Manager services to enterprise customers and developing tools to enhance system stability. My name is Masaki Kimura. Uh, I'm a Kubernetes developer, mainly contributing Kubernetes community and SIG storage. I worked with SIG storage folks and developed block volume feature and cross namespace volume data source feature. For a SIG storage use case, a feature in SIG APM machinery was needed. So I've also been contributing to SIG APM machinery. This session is about this feature. I first explain the background and discussion in the Kubernetes community. Then Akiho will explain the feature in the cross plane, show the demo, and finally conclude. Today, I will talk about my desired world, or a world without dependency consideration, as the session title goes. Let me start with explaining that my desired world aligns with the desired world of Kubernetes. According to Kubernetes official website, Kubernetes is explained as a platform that facilitates declarative configuration and automation. But what is declarative? Declarative is op often compared with uh, sorry. Uh, Declarative is often compared with imperative in programming language. And it is about how you describe your intention. Let's see the difference by using example with CNCF characters, FIP, the giraffe, and Z, the zebra. In this example, both FIP and Z would like to drink a tea. But they are asking their intention in a different way. FIPI just says a T in a declarative way, while Z says make a T in an imperative way. The difference on how they describe is the FIPI is asking a state, while Z is asking an action. Then, what will happen by the difference? Imagine that there is a T already. When FIPI requests a T, and there is already a T, you will do nothing because the request is already achieved. Then FIPI gets a T. On the other hand, when Z requests a T to make a T, and there is a T already, you make a T, and Z get two Ts in total, which isn't what she wants. So a declarative way or asking a state is more robust to the current state than imperative way or an action. Then, how this concept looks like in Kubernetes? In this example, FIPI is asking Kubernetes in a declarative way. He would like to keep the pod running on all nodes. Then, he just requests a daemon set. Z also wants to ask the same thing, but request in an imperative way. To do so, she needs to request a lot of things in consideration of the current state like Create pot one on node one, pot two on blah, blah, blah. If a new node is added, create blah, 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 and maybe some more things, uh, depending on the conditions. To consider current state, she needs a lot of knowledge on how to handle each state. So from the user's point of view, decorative configuration has an advantage that users can use with a special knowledge. But how such a decorative configuration works in Kubernetes? The answer is reconciliation loop. In reconciliation loop, there are two states uh, defined, a desired state and a current state. In short, reconciliation loop is a loop that makes current state to be the desired state and 
keep the both states the same. To do so, the loop observes the current state, analyzes the difference between the states, and then take action to make the both states the same. Only one step won't always make the state the same, and the current state may keep changing due to the external factors. So, the, in each step, the loop observes the current state and decides which action to take by the latest observed current state. In this way, your desired state request in a decorative way is achieved and it's robust to the current state. Let's see the Kubernetes example for reconciliation loop with a CNC character. This time we need one more character, Captain Container. He plays the role of controller in this session for us. FIPI, as an admin, would like to provide a new feature to the cluster. He knows a certain port running on all nodes. She requests a demo set to Captain Container as a demo set controller. Captain Container observes that there are two nodes, node one and node two, but in these nodes, there are no port running defined in the demo set. So he, he creates ports on node one and node two, then you see Z as another admin. She seems to do something independently. Z as another admin was told by a user that the cluster resource is not enough. So she requests to add a new node. Captain Container keeps observing the nodes and notice that there is a new node, node three, appears. So he creates a pod for the demo set on the node. As a result, FIPI can keep his intended pod running all the node without caring about which node exists in the cluster. Also, Z can add node without caring about what workloads are needed on the nodes. All the knowledge on dependencies are handled by Captain Container, the controller. Now that we know the decorative concept of Kubernetes and how it is achieved by using reconciliation loop, we are ready to talk about why dependency consideration required on deletion. In Kubernetes, a Kubernetes resource as a decorative configuration is recursively split into a smaller chunk of Kubernetes resources. Then they are handled by multiple different controllers. For example, in the diagram, FIP is deploying a kind of application by applying a CRD. Then an operator for the CRD creates a stateful set, daemon set, a deployment, and a job. Then controllers for these resources create their child resources and grandchild resources, like replica set, pod, PVC, PV, and so on. As shown in the diagram, there are many controllers that handles many kinds of resources independently, and there will be many resources created. So any users, admins, or even controllers won't know the entire dependencies perfectly in the decorative world. So they may easily delete an unintended resource, which may result in inconsistencies as Z is deleting a secret that is still being used by the CRD. So what will be needed? We don't want to care dependencies, just realize our desired state and avoid inconsistencies and delete in the correct order. To add a mechanism in Kubernetes to decoratively protect resources, I started discussion in the Kubernetes community and wrote kept 2839. I'll share the use cases, what was discussed, and the current state in the next slides. For protecting resources, there will be two use cases. The first use case is to protect an important resource. In other words, for misdirection prevention. For example, FIP knows that there is an important data in the PV so he requests never delete uh, 
the resource until I say OK, even when the Z request to delete it. The second use case is to protect a dependency resource. In other words, for deletion ordering. For example, Captain Container, the controller, knows that a secret is used by a CRD. It will be used in the duration of the CRD, so the secret should be deleted until the secret becomes no longer in use. After some discussion in the Kubernetes community, we plan to introduce a new concept called Lien. We introduce a new field Liens in the metadata field of the Kubernetes resource. The behavior of the Kubernetes API server is that it blocks the deletion request if the lien field isn't empty. This logic can be implemented in Kubernetes API server in a similar way that validating admission webhook blocks a certain request. For users to utilize it for protection, user needs to add a field in the end. Multiple users will be able to add their string for their purpose because the end field is defined as an array. The duration request will be blocked until the last string in the array is deleted. Let's check if it would work as expected for FIPI's use case. The first use case was to protect an important resource. To protect the PV, FIPI adds a string like important FIPI's data to PV's Rien's field. Then, Z may ask to delete the PV, but the Kubernetes API server blocks her request because the Rien's field is set. The second use case was to protect a dependency resource. To protect the secret, Captain Container adds a string like used by Captain's controller to the secret rings field. Then, Z may request to delete the secret, but the Kubernetes API server blocks her request because the rings field is set. Once the secret becomes no longer in use, like the CRD is deleted, Captain Container can remove the string from the secret to allow deletion. So, this feature provides a way to block deletion request, but dependency needs to be handled by controllers. Details on how it works I explained in my presentation at Open Source Summit in Japan 2021. If you are interested in this feature, please also check, check it. But it's almost three years since the presentation, but I said we plan to add this feature, which means the feature is not much yet. It is because there is a big broker for this feature. The broker is a permission model for RIEN. So the CAP 3617 fine grade authorization was created. The purpose of the CAP is to restrict to write only a specific field and or specific part of a specific field. There are two use cases. The first use case is to allow an operator to modify only RIEN's field. There will be an operator that needs to read or update only RIEN's field for a specific resource instead of the entire resource. But the current Kubernetes RBAC model allows to restrict per resource species. The second use case is to disallow an operator to modify others' reends. Multiple operators can update the reends field, which means one operator can modify another operator's reend. The implementation idea was to introduce a new authorization system for per-field granularity, but it requires a new complex feature and currently no people handling this. There are other attempts in CAP 4601 and CAP 3285 for similar purposes, but they don't meet the requirement for the RIEN's use case so far. As a result, the feature is not matched yet, so RIEN is not matched yet. Then, the next question would be if there are any other ways to solve this issue, even if it doesn't solve every problem. I will take over to Akiho from here. Okay. 
From here, I will talk about similar functionality to Rian in Crossplane. While the Rian has not been merged in Kubernetes yet, early this year, similar feature of Rian was implemented in Crossplane. The name of that feature is Usage. Usage is for blocking the duration of object. Two main use cases for the usage are, are as follows. First is protecting a resource from accidental deletion. Second is deletion ordering for ensuring that a resource is not deleted before the deletion of its dependent resources. So the use cases of RIEN and the usage are same. Before the explanation of usage in detail, I will explain briefly Crossplane itself. Crossplane is an open source and CNCF incubating project. Crossplane can transform your Kubernetes cluster into a universal control plane. Crossplane enables the unified management of non-Kubernetes resources, such as services of AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, etc., as Kubernetes objects by creating custom Kubernetes APIs. These resources can be integrated and managed as Kubernetes objects within a Kubernetes cluster. I will explain five core components of Crossplane. First component is composite resource definitions. Composite resource definitions defines the schema for custom API. Users can create composite resources using the API schema defined by composite resource definitions. Composite resource definitions are like custom resource definitions. I will explain composite resources later. Second component is compositions. Compositions is a template for creating multiple managed resources as a single object. Third component is a composite resources. Composite resources is a, a composite of managed resources as a single Kubernetes object. Crossplane creates composite resources when users access a custom API defined in the composite resource definition. Composite resources use the compositions to create new managed resources. Fourth component is managed resource. Managed resources are the object inside Kubernetes. Examples of managed resources include AWS EC2 instance, Google Cloud, GK Cluster, Azure Database for PostgreSQL. Fifth component is providers. Providers enable cross-plane to provision managed resources on an external service like AWS Azure. When users create a new managed resource, the provider reacts by creating an external resource inside the provider's environment. Examples of providers include AWS Azure Google Cloud. There is a limitation that the object is protected by usage. Not all Kubernetes resources and CRDs are the target of usage. Usage can protect only managed resource. From here, I'll explain overview of usage. In this slide, I'll introduce the API definition of usage. A usage has one required field that is spec.ob field for defining the resource in use or protected. The reason field defines the reason for protection and the by field defines the resource using the resource defined in ob field. These two fields are optional. A usage that can be used to declare usage relationships between cross-plane resources. The relations defined by usage will be enforced by an admission webhook that will be running as part of the cross-plane core. Similar to the Kubernetes Rian's proposal, the webhook will reject the request of deletions of resources that are in use by other resources. I'll show you a simple mechanism of blocking deletion by usage. Firstly, an administrator creates usage for protecting managed resource too. Then, cross-plane controller adds the in-use rubber to manage resource too. And when and the administrator requests a deletion of a managed resource to admission webhook intercepts the delete request to a managed resource to that is in use. This is a simple explanation of usage. 
from here, I will show you two demos of usage. First demo is to prevent accidental deletion of an S3 bucket created with cross plane. First, I will create a managed resource of original bucket kind for Amazon S3. Second, we will create a usage for blocking the deletion of bucket resources. Spec.org field defines S3 bucket. Finally, we will try to delete a bucket of managed resource and check managed resource is protected from deletion. Let's watch the first demonstration. This demo is very simple because I will use only managed resource YAML file to create managed resource. This is a definition of managed resource. Firstly, I will create S3 bucket as managed resource. Then check the managed resources has been created. It can be confirmed managed resources of a bucket kind. Then I will create usage that broke the deletion of S3. So I define S3 bucket in spec.org field and uh, define the message displayed when delete request happen to manage resource in reason field. In this time, protection S3 bucket should never be deleted. Confirm the usage has been created and the uh, ready status is true. And check the in use, in use label is attached to S3 bucket merge resource. I will try to delete the bucket we can confirm the deletion is failed. The message says that admission webhook denied the request. This resource is in use by one usages, including the usage protect S3 bucket with reason. And we can confirm the S3 bucket is not deleted. Second scenario of demo is showing deletion ordering. We will show you the scenario of a use case. That S3 cannot be deleted while DynamoDB is using it. At first, I will create two, dem two managed resources. One is DynamoDB table and the another is S3 bucket. A second, I will create usage object for deletion order. In this presentation, we defined bucket kind in over field and table kind in by field. So, Usage broke the deletion request to S3 bucket. In this demo, I will use selectors with usage. Usage can use selectors to define the resource in use or the using one instead of providing the resource name. Finally, I will try to delete S3 bucket of managed resource and check that usage broke the deletion because DynamoDB is using S3. Let's begin the second demonstration. Firstly, check the S3 and then DB providers are available. Then I will create composite resource definition named nosqs.database.example.com. And confirm that API named nosqs has been created. Then I will create compositions and, and confirm that composition which defines no SQL kind and API version has been created. Then I will create API to create composite resources defined no SQL kind. Check the API has been created. 
then check the managed resources has been created. It can be confirmed the managed resources of table and bucket, and confirm the synced and ready are true. I will create a usage that blocks the deletion of S3 because DynoDB is using it. So I define S3 bucket in spec.of field and DynoDB table in spec.by field. Confirmed usage has been created. Uh, <coughs> and ready is true. Okay, and check that in use label is attached to S3 bucket merge resource. I will try to date the bucket. You can confirm the addition is failed. So the message says that admission webhook denies the request. This resource is in use by one usage, including the usage S3 used by DynamoDB by resource table. And we can confirm the S3 bucket is not deleted. Okay, this is a summary slide. These are the issues when you delete some resources. The first is deleting unintended resources can result in inconsistencies, which affect applications and cluster. The second is dependencies bearing resources should be handled in a declarative way. We introduced you the solutions for these issues. The first is DM. DN can handle any resources and uh, will plan to incorporate better permission model. But DN is not available yet. The second is usage. Usage is ready to use as an alpha feature in cross plane. But usage can only handle resources that are managed by cross plane. If you are interested in the use cases, we welcome your contributions to CAP 2A39 and CAP 3617 to expand Rian's functionality and incorporate it into Kubernetes. Thank you. The question was, uh, is it different from RBAC? And uh, uh, the answer is uh, no. Uh, it is different from the RBAC because, uh, uh, okay, uh, it, it's a little bit difficult to explain. Uh, the, uh, okay, so the deletion uh, the user is uh, allowed to delete in reality, but uh, it, it is to avoid the misdeletion. So you, you have the right to delete, but uh, you would like to avoid the misdeletion. So it's a little bit different use case. So yeah, you are right that you may be able to uh, temporarily disallow the deletion by using the RBAC, but it's not good for user's viewpoint. So. So. Any other questions? Maybe our, we almost run out of time, so we, we are out. We are around here, so yeah, maybe we can answer the question later. Thank you. <laughs>